Well done, beautiful Randy. <laughs> it was gorgeous. Um, welcome to uh, our worship service at North Shore Baptist. Well, not at North Shore Baptist, but virtually. Um, uh, the fact that we're online uh, means that we're not exactly what we once were as a worship community, but I think that's exactly as it should be because the fact that we're online today means that we're an incredibly strong and resilient worship community. Um, who will always find new ways to uh, evolve and change and grow and uh, explore each other's technical expertise and uh, turn up to support each other. Um, so let's do that now and find our hymnals. I don't know where mine went, but uh, to sing uh, our first hymn. Thank you. 
A reading uh, from the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn so hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? To turn, uh, turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Good morning, my gathering. As we come to this day to hear the words of God that have been placed on my heart and resonate in my spirit this day, will you pray with me? Truly, I come before you most holy, just as I am. Weary, strained, stressed, tired, excited, motivated, challenged. Invoking you, O oh one, to pour into me what needs to be spoken this day. Wash aside all of the many transitional thoughts that have been floating around in my mind as I've been resonating on the scripture you have placed before me this day. That the very utterances that I make, the very moves that I take may be those, O oh God, that uplift the word that is desired to be said and to be heard this day. Holy One, come into the hearers that they may hear. Come to the seers that they may see. Come unto each of us, O God, in our own places, in our own locations, that we might receive what thus saith the Lord to us this day. Henceforth and forevermore, I pray. Amen. O sisters and brothers, siblings and friends, as we come to the message this morning, our title, if you will just sit with it for a while, is a sense of meaning. A sense of meaning. What gives you meaning right now? Is it the job that you have? Is it the house? that you own? 
It may be a, 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 a shack or maybe a mansion in your mind, but what gives you meaning? My friends, that is an ultimate question for us this day. What indeed gives us meaning in the times and moments in which we live right here, right now. For indeed, over these past six months and the months yet to come, we are dealing with a, a multitude of issues. And the question becomes, what is giving you meaning in the midst of the stress and the strains, the anxieties that are going on in our world? What is giving you meaning in this time of COVID-19 that seems to continue and to be enduring for a time yet to come? What is giving you meaning in the midst of the gun violence that continues to avail our land and our very city and our very community? What is giving you meaning in the midst of this tumultuous voting season? How will you make the choice of whom and what you will vote for? What will you stand for? What is today giving you meaning? Earlier this week, I, as I was pondering this, this passage, I came across someone that was very familiar to me and we had talked about in our, in our study just last week in our Bible study, we mentioned the name Howard Thurman. For those of you who are not familiar with Howard Thurman, he was a theologian, a preacher, an educator, and a civil rights leader that was under the radar for many of us. Do indeed, he had an influence over one Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and others. But I think what I most know Howard Thurman for is this sense of really going deeper into oneself and really digging deeper into who am I and who am I to be? What gives me meaning? In fact, I listened to a lecture series he did in 1975 in which he, in which he talks about a sense of meaning, a sense of meaning of oneself, a uh, sense of meaning of freedom. Is freedom give you what gives you meaning? Does your does your self give you meaning? Does love look out now? Does love give you meaning? And he doesn't answer it for us. He doesn't answer it for you. The challenge before you in the lecture series that he offers us is to put something in front of you to ask you, what does give you meaning? One of the stories that stuck with me as he was sharing this is he, he tells a story about a woman who, who, who was blind. She, 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 she wasn't blind from birth. She loses her eyesight as an adult. And she says one of the hardest things for her is that she doesn't know if people see her for who she is because she can't see them back. In essence, that that sense of, of loss of that connection is something that lingered with her in a sense of what gives her meaning. The visuality is what gives, gave her meaning. What, what gives you and me a sense of meaning today? What is that sense of meaning around everything that is bombarding us and bombarding this world today? What gives us a sense of meaning. Where do we find it? Where do we look for that? It was this sense of meaning that is, is drawn for me out of the text placed before us this day. There, there are multiple directions that, that we can go within this text, but what stood out this week, what stood out in my mind and in my heart and drove me into thinking about the, uh, how it turned and drove me into thinking about God was this sense of meaning that is going on with the Israelite people. You 
See, you've heard the text where, 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 where they are, are down below waiting for Moses to come back. Meanwhile, they have already gotten the word from on high. They've already received the verbal words of the Ten Commandments. But Moses, the leader who they have been talking to through by way of God, is no, is not with them. Both he and God are still on the mountaintop. And there these people sit. And one passage of my text, it tells me that this is about 40 days. Imagine that you've been waiting for your leader to come back for 40 days. You are in the desert. And you are beginning to question. You're beginning to question your sense of meaning. Your sense of being is what I hear and what I feel expressed in the text this day. There is a sense of meaning that they, they cannot find, that they cannot claim. That sense of meaning was one that originally lived in God, but now it lived in Moses, and neither God nor Moses was with them. And so their sense of meaning said to them, we've got to do something because we can't wait for Moses to come down. Matter of fact, he might have brought us out, but, but he's not here now. And so there's a, there's a sense of disconnect. There's a sense of lack of meaning. There's a sense of we need to go and do something about this. In essence, we need to fix it. We are not willing to wait on the Lord. In fact, we are willing so much to fix it that we will go against one of the first, one of the, the second commandment that we shall have no idol image for God. We want Aaron to create something for us. We're not told the holy reason why, but Aaron agrees to do this. But you see, I heard somewhere that we serve a jealous God. I heard somewhere that we, we serve a God that looks high and looks low. And God, while he's on the mountaintop, is able to see what these people are doing. God says to Moses, you need to go back down there. <laughs> you need to go back down there because guess what? You, we, I, I know I got a stiff neck people. They are acting perversely. In essence, they are going against the very rules we just set forth as a way to be in community. You remember that last week? We talked about being in, in community, right? But why would they do such a thing? And it, it, just, it just resonates with me that there is a lack of meaning for them. Yes, God has brought them out of the land of Egypt where they've been enslaved. Yes, God has brought them across the desert land. In the time when they were thirsty, God gave them drink. In the time they were hungry, God gave them food. But this was them receiving but not having meaning. Oh, let me say that again. This was them receiving but not claiming meaning. You, you didn't hear me. This was them receiving, but not standing on the meaning of God in their journey. Because somewhere I remember, I remember somewhere in the beginning of the book of Genesis, that God created humanity in God's image. Oh, you, God created humanity in God's image. And somewhere between that creation and this desert land story, there's been a disconnect around the meaning of who they are. Because in essence, my sisters and brothers, my siblings and friends, we are, they are the very image of God in the place in which they're in. And yet they could not see that. What they could only see was that Moses is not here. They could see that, that this God who's been talking through Moses is not here. And all they could think about is how are we going to fix this? Because this this is what gives us meaning because we will create an idol. We will create an idol and that will be our God because that is our sense of meaning. That is our sense of disconnect. Somehow we missed what thus said the Lord. My friends, we are yet doing the very same things in this 2020. 
We are yet finding meaning in all sorts of sundry of things and not in the truth and justice of God, not in the love and grace and mercy of God. We are not standing on our image of being made in God's image, but we are trying to fill it with some other stuff out there in the land. What is wrong with our political system? It's not created in the image of God. We've created our political system in the image of man. What is wrong? What is wrong in the, in the world of poverty is because we have created a poverty system around our own sense of our image of ourselves and what we want, but not an image of God, which calls us to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. Look out now. We are not claiming that image of who God is, because if we claim the image of God, it means that when we go to the voting, voting booth, we will be thinking that, and that will be our guide and who we vote for and who we care for. If we were thinking about that, we'd be looking at the gun violence that is going on across our nation, and we will be taking actions in a godly way because we are representing the image of God for whom we claim. What? What is giving us meaning? This is the trouble that happens with the Israelites when Moses is no longer there. There's been 40 days of gap, and there's been a time where they're saying, wait a minute, he's gone. He's not coming back. He's not here. So guess what? We will do it on our own accord. We will fix this ourselves. We will create an image of God that is not of us, but is of some animal or some other design, and that will be God. It will be something we can place over there on the mantle top. Have mercy. And act as if, yep, we walk by it, we, we, we got it good. But that's not the God we serve. That's not the God that we follow. Our God, the image of God, means that we will serve and take care of our brothers and our sisters. It means that we will come together and we will do a work that is worthy and true. It means that we will stand up and stand out on God's word in everything we do. But in essence, to do that, it's got to be the meaning we claim. It's got to be the meaning we claim. What, what is our sense of meaning today? What is your sense of meaning? What gives you meaning? God is asking us that question right now. Am I, am I, am I, do I find my sense of meaning by the way I care for my brothers and sisters and my siblings? Do I find that sense of meaning in the way that I volunteer for those who, and, and, and go out and give to those who are in need? Do I find my sense of meaning of giving my stuff away, not holding on to it so that I can say that I got a nice house, I got a nice car, I got a big boat? Or am I willing to find that sense of meaning in that place where when God is not even present, when my leader, when my church pastor ain't even around, I'm still going to do what is right. I'm still going to do what is true. I'm still going to do what is just. You don't have to worry about what I'm going to do. Because my meaning is that I am the image of God. And in that meaning, I'm going to live out the way God desires me to live. In everything that I say and do, I want to clarify something. It don't mean you're going to get it right. It don't mean you're going to be perfect. It means you're going to fall down sometimes and have to get back up. It means you have to say, I'm sorry. I, I made a mistake, Lord, but I, I, I'm getting back on that right path. Yes, it does not mean that you will not be perfect. No, the Israelites were not perfect, and neither did we expect them to. But here's the point. There was a sense of meaning that was not present for them. There was a sense of meaning that they could not claim. And so what they wanted to do was replace that image of who God would be or who they would be as God's own with something that they could just place on a side it's something they could walk by and, and say, yep, there's God sitting there. When all the time, God, all the time, God is in you. All the time, God is in me. What gives us a sense of meaning? How do we live our lives to show that sense of meaning that really represents and reflects who God is in our lives? Yes, God gave 10 commandments. Yes, God fed them and God gave them water. But if you do not have a sense of meaning of who God is in your life and why you are serving God and why you're claiming God, we need to keep working at that. 
Because when you do, you will understand, and it won't be work. <laughs> it won't be hard to do. It won't be difficult. Yes, there'll be some trying times, but let me tell you, I've heard it said before, God will not give you more than you can bear or that you can withstand. And in this moment for the Israelites, I got to admit, waiting on God to come down, waiting on Moses to come back, wasn't hard work. I don't see the hard work. Other than the fact that the, the mind and the heart did not see themselves as who God is. And God is asking me to remind you and myself that you and I are the image of God, that our meaning and our source comes from who God is in our life. How do we live our life that is showing the meaning, the true meaning of who God is in us, through us, and around us? Because the times are hard. It's yet hard living in this time of COVID-19. It's yet hard when you continue to, to hear young children are being injured or hurt by gun violence or adults or anyone for that matter. It's hard when you continue to look at what is going on in the political processes, not only in our local politics, but in our national politics. It does call us to today to begin to think about and to claim that if we are the image of God, if we can, we can claim that, that, that image of God and that meaning for our journey, I don't promise you a rosy path, but I do say that you will be all right. This is the message God wants us to know. Because yes, the Israelites did not see themselves as the image and they were seeking for it. They were seeking for a sense of meaning. And God wanted them all the time to come to that sense of meaning that they were God's own. And God is still, still wanting the same thing of you and me today. That, 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 that we will find that sense of meaning, that we will, we will settle down and, and, and sit with God. One of the things I loved about, love about Howard Thurman, if you ever hear him speak, I was listening to one of his, his speeches last night, just to resonate once again. He, 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 he's, he, if you're stressed, you'll get calm. If you're worried, you'll let it go because the way he, he brings forth the word to you is a way that helps you to sit back and discover just who am I with God? Just who am I with, with this God that I claim? Sisters and brothers, if we, if we are claiming God this day, if we are saying we, we love the Lord, he heard our cry, if we're saying that we want to honor God in, in spirit and in truth, then therefore you and I are the very image of God. And therefore that begins to shape our sense of meaning. That begins to shape our sense of grounding because you and I are God's children. So this day, this day may you go from this place reclaiming that sense of identity and that sense of meaning. But you go from this place knowing that, that the very actions you take, the very moves that you make right now determine who you are and who God is within you. And may you go from this place knowing that, that, that whether you realize it or not, that when someone sees you, they are seeing, have mercy now, the very image of God. You are the very reflection of God. You are the very hands, eyes, feet. You are the very body of the Lord. And what will that be? What meaning will you express? Is it one of love and compassion? Or is it one of bitterness and hatred? Is it one of welcoming and inviting? Or is it one that says, if you are, 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 that you are distant and neglected? My friends, this is the call for you and me this day. Yes, it is a challenge. In the midst of everything that bombards us constantly, understand that this was also what was happening to the Israelites. There was a bombardment of being in this desert land and, and trying to pull each other together. They were not just one group just together, even though they were, but they were different thoughts and different ideals, different people, men and women, children. There was a whole caveat of folks there, probably some Egyptians who had decided to leave as well. So it was a mixed bag. And so yet I understand, but that is the call for you and me to find a sense of meaning. May God bless you. May God keep you. And a sense of meaning may be your worth this day. Amen.
It is now time for us to enter into a time of prayer where we honor the image of God in one another um, by lifting up each other's joys and each other's concerns. So I will invite you now to share um, what is on your heart. And if you are watching on Facebook, I also have the Facebook feed up here. So you are welcome to share a prayer concern that way. And I will lift that up as well. What do we have to share with one another? I would ask for prayers for my father who was supposed to have shoulder surgery tomorrow and it was delayed for the second time this year because it's an elective surgery and the cases are spiking in Wisconsin. And so all elective surgeries are canceled for now. Um, among the many pains and frustrations in the midst of what could have been managed differently, um, just the continuing pain and the non-relief of that pain, uh, pray for his own sense of healing and um, probably a greater sense of responsibility for each of us to the collective whole. For Becca's father, um, navigating this time of having to put off uh, a healing treatment because of this broader situation and for all of the continued grief that it causes and for us opening to do what we can to take care of one another in the midst of that pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would also like to lift up uh, to one of our youth who was uh, hit by a car while biking this week um, and was hospitalized. So uh, prayers for his, his recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If we have no other prayer requests to offer out loud, I invite you all to join me in spirit as we open our hearts to the spirit in prayer. Holy God, as your spirit flows among us, within us, binding us together across distance, Bring our hearts and minds together that we may be one heart and one mind, not to think alike and not to feel alike, for we feel so much and we think so many thoughts, but that way we may be connected, that we may feel one another's pain and be open to one another's pain, even in the midst of our own pain, that we may be open to one another's joy in the midst of our joy and so be connected as one people. I pray for all of the pain in our world right now, all of the pain in our church, the pain in our society, the grief, the uncertainty, as the pandemic continues on, continues to put people in the hospital, continues to take lives. I pray for those who are grieving, from, for those who are separated from those who are in the hospital and cannot be with them because of health precautions. God, I pray that you may be a comfort to the lonely, that you may be a healing balm to the sick, to the worried, to the fearful. And I pray that we may be your hands and feet in this time, that we may be the hands of healing, that we may be the feet that march, that call attention to the pain where it can be healed. God, I pray that in the midst of all of the uncertainty and the fear and the pain around us, that we may not look to hastily construct meaning or hastily construct worth, but instead that we may look within us and that we may look to one another and see in ourselves and see in one another your sacred image and know that it has always been there and it will always be there, that there is nothing that this world can do. There is no pandemic. There is no political situation. There is nothing in this world that can take the image of God out of us, that can take the image of God out of one another. 
So God, this day and all of days, may we regard ourselves and we, may we regard our siblings and friends as holy, as created in your image, as bearers of your sacred meaning. And in living that, may your healing abound, may your peace abound on this earth. And now we join together, speaking the prayer that Jesus taught us about the reign of peace that has echoed through the centuries and come to us today. Holy One, our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, it is time for us to have our departing words of benediction. So siblings, as we go from this place and from our respective places abroad, may the peace and joy and love of Christ and our God abide with each and every one of us. And may we this day, having heard the word, a sense of meaning, be challenged and be encouraged and be strengthened, oh God, to go from this place, living out our true identity and our true image of you. For, oh God, I know this is your desire for each and every one of us. And this also is our prayer. Amen.